Hey everyone, this is Ditto from Reef to Reef and Humble Fish. This video is to go over the initial setup of the GHL Ion Director. After you unbox the GHL Ion Director and doser to use with the Ion Director, the first decision you need to make is are you going to be doing a side-by-side -side or stacking configuration, as shown in the illustrations below. What you see in front of you right now is a side-by-side -side configuration. And this would be what a stacking configuration would look like. This is very important. And again, it's going to be different for each type of tank placement. Depending on where you're going to be installing it on your tank, the cabinet space that you have is gonna determine if you're gonna do a side-by-side -side or a stacked configuration. Next, placement of the ion director is also important when making the decision if you're gonna do a stack-by-stack, -stack, a stacked configuration, or a side-by-side. -side. The sensor is sensitive to the interference, so do not place it next to things like metal halide ballast, speakers, entertainment systems, UV lighting, uh, crackling and loud humming power supplies, etc. It also needs to be placed on a level surface. The ion director is not supported in this configuration vertically, for an example. Cannot do this. You can't put it upside down. It is only supported in this type of configuration. It also needs to be placed on a level surface, free from vibration. Because of my setup, I am gonna be doing this type of configuration, which is a stacked, conf uh, stacked configuration, and not this configuration, which is a side-by-side. -side. Now that I know that I'm gonna be doing a stacked configuration, using the reference chart as shown here, I know what size I need to cut my dosing tubes when it comes to the connection between the ion director and the doser that's going to be supplying the ion director with the appropriate water sample, reference A and reference B solution. So I know now what the length of the tube is gonna need to be from my water supply, my reference A and my reference B pump. Very important. If you go with this type of configuration, the tubes are going to be longer. And again, you would use the appropriate chart and cut them to that length. Now that we know how we are going to uh, install the ion director and the doser, we need now to install the ion probe. It is very important that you install the probe correctly because incorrect installation will cause false readings of the unit. First, what you need to do is you need to loosen the bolt or the nut on the side of the ion director, okay? Loosen, but do not remove. The next thing you need to do is, is that you need to look at the probe. You're gonna notice when you look at the ion probe, and I'm showing one right here, is it is slotted, okay? It is slotted like this, okay? There's a slot on each side of the probe. When you install the probe, it must be installed like this into the unit. You're gonna notice if I install it wrong, what you're going to see right now is, is that I'm going to try to install it with the slots up, you're going to notice it is still going to go in, but you're going to notice that the space that's left here is much larger. This is an incorrect installation. I'm going to pull the pro back out and I'm going to put it properly and then I'm going to slide it in. You're going to notice now that it's actually in more, that it's actually slid in all the way. And once you have slid it in all the way, what you're going to want to do is tighten, hand tighten the nut. And again, what I have learned while using the unit and testing the unit, hand tightening the nut is all that's required um, for proper installation, a really good tight fit. You don't need to take a wrench to this. And again, and we'll monitor it during the initial setup to make sure that there are no leaks there. The next thing that you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to connect the DIN connector. So I'm gonna turn the unit around to the back. And what you're gonna do is you're going to take now the DIN connector and you're gonna plug it into the sensor port of the ion. You're now your probe is installed. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to connect the PAB cables. You need to have a PAB cable connect from the ion director to the doser. So that's what this cable is. I'm gonna first plug it into the top one and you're gonna hear it click. So that tells you that it's installed. And I'm also gonna do it to the doser beneath. And again, you're gonna to wanna to hear it click. And then the next connection that I need to do, it's from my Proflux controller or my existing Aquabus connections to 
the doser or the ion director because I have a free pad port on the top and the bottom. So here is the cable from my Proflex controller. I'm going to plug it in on the bottom. Again, until it clicks. The next thing that you need to do now is install the power cables. You're going to get a Y cable just like this when you order your ion director. And what this Y cable is for is, is that it's going to share the same power supply as the doser. And this eliminates having to have an additional power supply in the cabinet. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the side of the Y connection itself, and you're gonna plug one into the doser, okay? And I like to go underneath, and one to the sensor. And then that's how you install the Y connection. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you install it into your cabinet is install your vent tube, three different configurations. Number one is you can vent directly back into your sump. You can vent into a drain line or you can vent into a wastewater container. The choice is yours. So what you would do is you would install your dosing tube here, um, tighten up the nut, and then that would be the installation of your vent tube. And that's all you would need to do to the back of the unit. After you had your vent tube installed, what you would be doing next is, and I'm going to show those steps, is you would plug in the other side of the Y connector down here to the power supply of the doser, like this. And then I'd be powering up the unit. And the reason why we start powering up the unit, the next steps is the configuration of the dosing pumps need to be configured. And after we calibrate them, we need to connect them then to the ion director. And after we connect them to the ion director, we then need to um, assign the pumps to the ion director. And we also then need to turn around and prepare the cell for measurement when it comes to the ion director. With the units now powered up, you need to make sure that the communication between the Proflex controller and the ion director and do doser is working. See this, look on the back of the units for the communications and state light as shown by the GHL picture on the right and my devices on the left with the arrows pointing at them. If these lights are not lit up, power down the units, reconnect the cables, and try again. With both the doser and the ion director on and connected successfully via a PAB cable to the Proflex controller, we need now to assign them to the Proflex controller for use. First, open up the GHL app and choose your Proflex controller. Once you've logged into your Proflex controller, use the hamburger icon in the upper left-hand corner, choose System, and then scroll down and click on Assign and Configure Connected PAB Device. Then click on the Assign Device button on the top of the screen. It's going to then show a spinning hourglass for just a few seconds with a please wait. Now with the Assign Device menu options now present, all devices that are currently connected to your Proflex controller will now appear here. New ones that have just been installed onto your Proflex controller will appear on the list without a small blue checkbox next to them. Go ahead and click on the GHL doser to slave and the ion director and then click save. Do not be alarmed when you are thrown out of the app as this is part of normal operations as now the GHL Proflex controller is installing those two devices for you to access within the application. With the doser and ion director now assigned to your Proflex controller, we need to assign the correct dosing pump numbers to the new doser I installed. To do this, you need to first reopen your GHL mobile app, then click on your Proflex system. Upon clicking on your Proflex system, you'll be brought into your dashboard. Next, in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, click on the hamburger icon, and then choose system. With the system menu now appearing, scroll down to Assign and Configure Connected PAB Devices and click. Upon doing this, a list of all devices that are currently connected to your Proflex controller will appear. Scroll down and locate the new doser that you just installed and click on the blue gear icon next to the doser. Once you do this, a new menu option will appear. First, 
you need to enter in how many pumps were installed on this doser. For me, this was four. Then what you need to do is enter where you wish to have the first dosing pump appear in the dosing pump menu for use. For me, because I already have 16 doser heads on my tank, I'm going to assign this doser to start at 17. Enter in your values, then click save when done. With the dosers now set up, we can proceed with the calibration and remaining setup. Click on the back in the upper left hand corner, then click on the hamburger icon and then choose the dosing pump. Click on the dosing pump that will be used as the water sample pump for your ion director. For me, this was pump 17. Enter in a description that you wish to use for the dosing pump. For me, I entered in ion sample. Scroll down to the pump settings and change the max speed of the dosing pump from 0 to 3. A pop-up box will appear stating the motor speed has changed. Click to OK, then choose the Save button. Calibration of the dosing pump is key for the successful reading of the ion director. Because of this, I am using a scale. I place in the video description the link to the scale I use when calibrating the pumps. I first perform a tear function. A tear function allows me to place the empty container that I'm going to be used to collect the fluid onto the scale and remove the weight of the said container. Then I run the calibration by placing a supply line dosing tube to the doser into RODI water and the exocyte of the doser into my collection container. Once the calibration is done, I place the collection container onto the scale and record the results. I will do this three to five times depending on the results, taking the average and then entering that number into the flow rate of the pump. Once I enter in the flow rate of the pump, I click save. With the water sample dosing pump now configured, it's time to calibrate the reference A pump. Click back on the upper left hand corner of the screen and choose the dosing pump that will be supplying the reference A solution to the ion director. For me, this was pump 18. Enter in the description you wish to use for this dosing pump. For me, I entered in reference A or ion reference A. Scroll down to the container and enter in a capacity of 500 or 1000 milliliters depending on the size of the reference solution that you purchased with your ion director. By default, when you first purchased your ion director, it was 500. And then choose a minimum, minimum value. Make sure the alarm below minimum is enabled, then click on the refill container. Enter in either 500 or 1000 and then click refill. This will refill the virtual container allowing you to monitor how much fluid is being used and alert you when the container is low. Scroll down to the pump settings and change the max speed of the dosing pump from 0 to 3. A pop-up box will appear stating the motor speed is changed. Click OK and then choose the save button. Calibrate the pump and when completed enter in the flow rate of the pump then click save. With the reference A pump now configured, it's time to calibrate the reference B pump. Click back on the upper left hand corner of the screen and choose the dosing pump that will be supplying the reference B solution to the ion director. For me, this is pump 19. Enter in a description that you wish to use for the dosing pump. For me, I entered in ion reference B. Scroll down to the container and enter in a capacity of 500 or 1000, depending again on the amount of reference solution that you're using. Then enter in a minimum value. For me, I entered in 100. Make sure that the alarm if below minimum is enabled and then click the refill container. Enter in either 500 or 1000 milliliters, then click refill. This will again refill the virtual container, allowing you to monitor how much reference solution is being used and alert you when the container is low. Now scroll down to the pump settings and change the max speed of the dosing pump from zero to three. Remember, pop-up box will appear stating that you have changed the speed of the motor. Calibrate the pump and when complete, enter in the flow rate of the pump and then click save. Okay, with the pumps now calibrated, I can now connect all the interconnecting tubes between the doser and the ion director. Understanding is that this is my water sample pump, this was my reference A pump, and this is my reference B pump. So 
from the water sample pump to pump A, or the first doser pump, I've connected the water sample tube. What that understanding is that the lengths of each one of these tubes is determined by the chart that I'm showing below, or, or showing now, which is used in a stacked configuration. If it was side by side, these tubes would be cut differently. It's very important that you follow those tubes lengths you know, measure a couple times. The other thing is do not use silicone tubing on any one of these tubes. You should use the tubing that came with the ion director or PVC tubing. And again, I did it from the first tube, going from the first doser to the water sample, second one going to the reference A, and the third one going to reference B. Okay, understanding is that I'm going from the output port of each one of the dosers, again because the reference solution for an example is gonna come up through this connection, spin around the doser and come up, up to the ion. And that's the same for each one of these. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to install your water supply line or your water supply line from your tank to the ion director's dosing pump or pump one in my configuration. But before doing so, you need to make sure that the filter that comes with the ion director is installed specifically on that water sample line. And it's done between the tank and the dosing pump, not between the dosing pump and the ion director. This does come with the ion director and it's very important that it is installed. Failure to install this could damage the ion director. Particulates are inside of your tank. Those particulates could get inside of the ion director and start building up, causing you know readings no longer to be proper within the ion director. So it's very important that you install um, the supplied filter. I have found that on my tank, when it's come to replacing these, I usually replace them about once a year. Um, again, it depends on where you're drawing the water. The GHL's recommendation is to draw the water from the cleanest area if you have a sump. Now. How do you install it? It's pretty simple. You could try to read the arrows that are on it. There's a nice arrow that says a specific direction, but really all you need to do is make sure that this side, the larger side is pointing towards the doser. So now I've connected the supply side. This is going down to my sump, right where my return pump is. There's my filter, easily I can get uh, remove it. And then it comes up into the supply side of my water sample uh, dosing pump. With the water supply now installed to the doser, we can continue with the reference A being connected to the reference A dosing pump and the reference B solution being fed to the reference B solution pump. Now with the water supply line, the reference A and the reference B solutions being installed, the last thing that needs to be done is the priming of all three pumps. With the water sample reference A and reference B now connected, the last thing you need to connect is the wastewater line. The wastewater line can go a couple of different directions. In my installation, it's running down to this wastewater container, but that's not your only choice. The wastewater line can go either to your tank, to a drain, or a wastewater container. Last, don't forget the vent port on the back of the ion director. I showed this in the beginning of the video. That dosing line can run to either the sump or your tank, either a wastewater container or down the drain. The choice is yours. With the priming of the three dosing pumps to the ion director complete, we can now continue and finish the setup of the ion director. Open up your GHL Connect application. Click on your Proflex controller. Once your dashboard appears, click on the hamburger icon located in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Choose the control menu option. Then choose the ion director. The first thing that we need to do is enable the ion director. Scroll down and click on the small slider button next to the ion director to enable this option. Then click save. Next, we need to configure which pumps will use the ion director. Scroll down to the pumps for measurement. In the water sample dosing pump, enter in the pump that will be used to provide your tank water to the ion director. For me, it was pump 17. Next, in the reference A pump measurement, 
enter in the pump that we'll be providing the reference A solution to the ion director. For me, it was pump 18. Last, in reference B's pump's measurement, enter in the pump that will be providing the reference B solution to the ion director. For me, it was pump 19. Next, we need to enter in the sample tube volume. Scroll down to the water sample setting and click on the calculator on the right hand side. A new menu will appear asking you to enter in the length of your dosing tube to help you calculate the volume of the length. In my tank, my dosing tube length to the inlet side of the water filter was 32 inches. And from the water output side to the doser was five inches. Therefore, I would enter in 37 inches. Then I would click on add inline filter button and then the calculated volume would appear. Then click apply and this will apply the water sample volume to the water sample settings. Now click save. With the pumps assigned, and the water sample volume set, the last step is to activate the ion probe. Click on the prepare measurement cell. When you do this, the ion director is going to prepare the probe for use. It is important to inspect the ion director after you click the prepare measure cell. As now, it is filling the chamber with your tank water, reference A and reference B solution. If you see any leaks, you should power down the unit dry off any wet components, correct the issue, and try again. Water can damage the ion director. With the cell not prepared for measurement, we must wait six hours to conduct our first measurement. This completes the initial setup of the ion director. If you have any questions or comments, you can find me on Humblefish and Reef to Reef. This is Ditto, signing off.